Hello and welcome to DRLACC. We are live at Laguna. Here in California. Free, free practice is currently ongoing right now. As you can see, we currently have 18 drivers right now. Possibly 19. Confirmed for tonight's race. We are going to have some fun here tonight. Obviously, if this is your first time watching us, welcome. Enjoy. Please, please uh, follow the channel and subscribe if you so desire we race every tuesday night 12 p.m eastern so but if you've been with us before welcome back we are always glad to have you here at drlecc what on what we have for us in store tonight uh i honestly do not know and i could not tell you because it's going to be just as unpredictable as last week was in Brands Hatch. So far you have Stofko, Kerbal, and Sanika topping the timing charts as they, did, as they always do. You have Shooter McGavin currently in P4. Adding a little bit of spiciness to the Pro-Am sector. Then you have Nairati, Rodriguez, and Macklin. Rodriguez was raced with us last week. Macklin is in 7th, Cooper, well, Blunden now, Cooper, Swanson, Hayes, Polinick, Brees. New racer joining us this week, Malot. He is currently the teammate of Rodriguez. We welcome here to DRL ECC. This will be his first race of the season. With the American Stooges, he is Larry. I've asked him that personally as he drives on by. You, obviously, you have Frank Castle on the Swine Flu Syndicate, Ricky Bobby, Shake and Bake, Don Fossman, Sean Chez, and we do have a new... Another new driver, Batten. He's currently in the Lamborghini for Gorilla Racing. He will be another new addition to the DRL DRL ACC division we thank him for coming along with us for tonight and we have Leung so we have a full 20 drivers here to here tonight this will make things very very interesting we will soon be hearing from Nairati which he's now in the pits so I'm actually gonna go grab him now because he's in VR it makes everything a little bit interesting but we're just going to pull him in right now. Thank you very much, Nairati, for joining us. How do you feel going into Laguna? I feel all right. Um, currently nursing a little bit of a cold, so going to try not to let that affect me too much. But um, obviously, it's a pretty difficult track. Very technical. Uh, not a lot of forgiving runoff areas. The sausage curbs around here are particularly dangerous. But... Um, I'm feeling good. Um, as you'll guys see in the practice session there, my time is not overall indicative too much of my pace. It's mostly focused on long runs. So, uh, you know, hoping I could put a race together here. Um, last weekend at Spa, we, we won't go through it too much. The struggles and stuff like that. How are you and your teammate looking to rebound here and actually make the rebound happen? For sure. And um, this goes back to the drawing board. Uh, looking at the mistakes, looking at the situations we were involved in, and uh, just kind of going back to the fundamentals on how we can avoid putting ourselves in those situations or things we could do to mitigate those kinds of mistakes from our own part in the future. Now, with this being the final half of the season, is there any race you're looking forward to more than any other with, with the schedule that's upcoming? I mean, personally, uh, I'm my sights are set on the Hungaro ring. Uh, being half Hungarian myself, that's uh, it's always nice to go back to the Hungaro ring uh, in any sim racing game. And it's a track that, even though I've not spent too much time on in this game, it's a track that I thoroughly enjoy. Um, and it's a track that, when you really put it together, the lap feels extremely satisfying around. So that's one that's definitely circled, uh, circled on my calendar. Pardon me. No worries. Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your uh, practice session to join us. I'll move you back to the channel, and uh, good luck in qualifying in the race. Okay, thanks, Morgan. Enjoy the stream, everybody. All right. That was Nairati of Team On The Rush. After some struggles 
these last two races they are looking to rebound and they want to rebound so they will be a team and their drivers will be drivers to watch throughout the stream today with less than 10 minutes go with less than 10 minutes to go in the practice session let me know down below and in the chat your predictions for qualifying a little bit of, little bit of high beam action from Stafco there Unknown as to why, but we'll figure out the reason behind that. Obviously, commentator, I can't be biased, but I have a feeling it'll either be Stafko or Saniga. One of them, I have a feeling, will probably take pole position. We'll ride along with some other drivers in the TV2 Helicam. Apparently we have Swanson. No one is really improving on their time right now. Even though the track is optimum. A lot of their a lot of the drivers getting their optimum time already done before the stream has started. Right now it's just drivers getting used to the rate currently getting used to the track, drivers that have just joined getting in matt terry makes it 21 now on the grid oh my goodness gracious we are gonna have a very interesting time here folks as Brees currently through the last few sector through the last few sectors here is doing quite well now oh, here comes the corkscrew now you drop about five stories in a hundred meters. Which is quite insane when you think about that. That corkscrew is going to catch a lot of drivers out. So it will be interesting to see who can best manage that. That, sec that sector, that part of the track. So here we have the 111 Batten. He is new. Like I said, he is new. I haven't seen him before, but that car is looking quite nice. The black and the white. As here he comes, he approaches the corkscrew. currently in the pro-am division so let's see how much competition he's going to give to the pro the pro-ams here so far it looks like he's going to put himself i think still 13th yeah yeah it did not move so as we have a bunch of traffic up here You'll get these little pockets of traffic every now and then. Stavko. Looks like he's going to somehow improve more on that time. As he goes faster. Which I didn't think was possible until now. Yeah, the BMW gets minus 16. Holy. An amazing amount of, amazing amount of kilograms taken off. Only one improving on their lap time is Batten right now. Sean Chez will actually improve on his lap time quite a bit and move up to 18th. Qualifying beginning in less than five minutes. Everyone's already moved out of the ACC lobby and into their own chats. It'll be interesting to see how things go with less than five minutes to go in the practice session. I 
Currently, Leong and Terry have yet to set lap times. They are currently on track right now. Matt, the Hornet, Terry. Looking to, looking to see what this Hornet can do. Andrew, you guys causing a yellow flag, but that's just him pulling over to the side of the road. Not an accident. South Coast currently out on track. The rest of the top is in the pits. With 21 drivers, it's qualifying is going to be chaos. It's going to be crazy, but we'll be with, but we'll try and stick with it every step of the way. This Batten is improving more and more as he goes out onto the track. He keeps improving and improving. I know he's currently on pace to find about five tenths, and that five tenths is going to put him. Now 10th. Very close to Cooper, though. Very, very close. Stavkov finding even more time. So it's not very... As I say that, he is currently out in doing a 360 and going to pull into the pits to be finished for most likely what is the session. So with... Well, as he reverses back, Frank Castle, well, the pro, currently the one of the pros lowest on the grid. We have nine pros now. Frank Castle pulling a Stofko, taking out the three board, and gone is that three meter board. And with that, there are only now three drivers left out on track. Leon is, go is going to now move up to 19th after finding a 10th. And the 111 goes into the pits, so now there is just two drivers out on track. Al Alan Leun and Matt Terry. Both were two were the people that joined late, so they are just getting all the track act that they can. Everyone else, as you can see, is in the pits all lined up snug as a bug in a rug. My goodness. Look <laughs> look at the beauty. That is this. This is just absolutely wonderful. That's a great shot. As close to as close is to to a grid like a full grid of all the cars as you can probably get in this instance. So that's that's honestly incredible to see. But less. Last we will go back to Leon, who's currently on a good lap time. Uh, three tenths is going to keep him 20th for now. He's still got another lap to go. Same with Terry. All right, well... All the eyes of the world now are on Terry. Who was it that we were able to get almost all the cars? It was Castle. Yep, almost all the cars. It is so close. We have 20 cars in one shot. That's incredible. All eyes of the world now are on, are on Matt the Hornet Terry. I say that and he goes off. But he is going to keep going instead of going into the pits for the last 15 seconds. He is going to just continue to drive as his car weebles and wobbles as he heads down one of the many straights here. Now, as he heads up to the corkscrew, if you want a front row view of what he sees, we will never know. As the green light flags and Saniga is was going to be the first car out but I think that dubious honor is gonna belong to Kerbal 
Yes, it will. Kerbal will be the one with the dubious honor of getting to go out on track first. Followed by, I believe that Stofko. 93 is going to be Rodriguez. 21 is going to be Hayes. And 32, Nairati, Cooper, Polinick, Brees. Pretty much everybody now is going to come out on track and do their first runs. You are obliged to get out of the way of the faster car and not to compromise their lap. In a, in a sense, it is just blue flags. As the two, as the Suderia Boscaiolos get ready to go out on their flying laps together. We will ride aboard with the race program, Kerbal. There was a glitch in the system last week. Hoping to avoid that same glitch this week. So as you get ready, he heads down this final little straight here. Takes the second to last corner. Full throttle as soon as you power out. Break between the two, pretty much at the two. And off he goes to begin his first flying lap of this session. There is only 15 minutes in this session. So this session will go down pretty quickly in terms of timing. Remember, you you are obliged to get out of the way of the faster moving vehicles. So making sure you're responsible, getting out of the way of the faster cars will be very, very key. Kerbal so far making his way just nicely down this straight. Now you want to see what, as the olive, as you increase in elevation, you get to the corkscrew. It looks flat on the map, but trust me, it is not. As you go downhill, losing five stories in a hundred meters, it's very key not to lose control in that area, or else you are in a world of hurt. Nairati invalidates his lap. Same does Bradley. Which would be Cooper in this case. As Kerbal crosses the line with Sanyiga pretty much right behind him. Kerbal doing a 123-1. Sanyiga doing a 123-3. Surely those lap times will increase. Number 26. Begins his flying lap now. Number 93, Rodriguez. Currently fourth. Hayes now fifth. Stofko currently on provisional pole. Number 19, Polinik goes fifth. Brees goes eighth. Castle goes fifth. Swanson, Blunden, eighth and ninth respectively. McLaren restarting his time now. Next across the line will be Li Un. He goes ninth as there are yellow flags pretty much all across right now. Next across the line, that would have been 16 Sanchez. He slaps at seventh. Next across the line with a valid lap time is going to be Kerbal, but he's not showing any signs of improvement. Sanyiga, however, is showing a lot of improvement right now. It's crazy with all the blue. And we're trying to get everyone out of your way. Sanyiga slaps it on provisional pull right now. Macklin absolutely destroys and tags the wall. Next across the line, I do believe number 34. He still stays second. Hayes with currently four tenths of improvement. Stays Ninth, 32 crosses the line, starting his next flying lap. Number 19 goes next across the line and goes sixth. 85 crosses the line. Malat does not starts his flying lap now. Seven, six, 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 and 111. Blunden, 13th. Brees, 14th. And 
batting fourth as chaos erupts everywhere. Le Leon still stays 11th. 16. Sanchez still stays 9th. Next across the line is going to be number 11. Fossman stays 14th. Number 69. Gotta find the numbers again. It's almost like I'm lost. Shooter McGavin goes fourth. Number 18, Matt Terry goes fifth. 91 starts there, flying lap. Saniga improving even more on his delta. Gains about five tenths. And makes his makes the gap from to P2 over six tenths, almost a second from third. We're looking for valid lap times. Number 93. Gonna bring another one that's almost a full second up. As he goes fifth, 21 and 32, 21 stays 12th, number 32 finally with a time on the board, drops it fourth, number 19 goes next across the line, 10th, number 85, not showing a lot of improvement, stays 16th, 7, oh my goodness, times are just flying, 37, Swanson now goes up into ninth Burt Macklin still 10th Batten still 8th as they're just flying up and down my board right now it's almost so, so hard to keep track with 21 drivers 16 goes next across the line 14th as Breeze brings out the yellow flag in that sector number 11 Fossman he is going to improve is he going to improve places It looked like he was going to, but he must have invalidated. Number 18, Matt Terry drops at 5th. Bradley Cooper drops at 8th. Saniga still showing improvement. Just keeps dropping the time. Number 26 is going to be next across the line. Ricky Bobby finally putting a lap time together. Puts it 19th. Number 21 is going to be next across the line. That's going to be Hayes. He's currently showing about 3 tenths of improvement. That will put him over Sean Chez, but behind Frank Castle. As the yellow flags draw out everywhere from drivers either invalidating or... Ooh, we might have had a nice collision there. Ooh, that is a bad position to be for the drivers. As Frank Castle is improving, but by how much is he going to improve by? It didn't look like he improved all that much. He stays in his current position. Number 16 is going to be across the line next. I almost seem to can't find him. Sanchez still stays 16th. Frank Castle brings out the yellow flag there. Matt Terry is going to be next across the line. His lap time still showing is valid. Br brings it up into fourth. Number 34, Stofko, finding a whole bunch of time. He stays valid as he crosses the line and slowly chips away at the gap brought on by Saniga. 21, 32, and 18 are going to be next across the line. Terry showing some improve. Eight, 19, sorry, I read that number wrong. Ponick showing a great deal of improvement, actually. Hayes stays 14th. Polinick goes up into 9th. Nairati still stays 5th. Looking for that improvement as there's less than now 5 minutes to go in this qualifying session. Drivers are going to be keen on going to the pits to get a fresh set of rubber. Sanchez, can he find any improvement? No, it does not look like it. 69 behind him. That would be Shooter McGavin. No improvement there. Mr. 395, the race program of Kerbal. He's going to find two tenths, but that means nothing to him as he still stays third. Number 18, Matt Terry. He's going to find two tenths. That'll also mean nothing to him. That just increases his gap on Irati. Number 91 comes next across the line. Tenth. Leun. Currently still 18, 34. Again, chips away at that gap, but nothing new. 
Less than five minutes to go. Alrighty, Parks, he's probably going to go into the garage. Absolutely, he is. Drivers with a whole bunch of improvement. Burt Macklin as he heads into the corkscrew. We're looking for the drivers now with the most improvement. Macklin almost on the verge of a full second. 1.6 would get him ahead of Nairati, but can he hold on to that? Is the question. Fast and furious here. In DRL, as the times are dropping like stones, we're getting into the final parts. As he drops it fifth, putting Nairati down into sixth. There's Burt Macklin, Frank Castle down all the way. Two pros out of the top ten. Is going to create some chaos amongst the ranks. Kerbal, again, shifts into that time chasing Stofko, but Stofko is chasing Saniga. Trying desperately to find time into areas that I didn't think time may be possible. As he just finds four almost four tenths as a whole magically, but he'll find three tenths for sure. Getting the gap now down to less than a two tenths. As we look next to see if there's anybody else crossing the line with improvement. Don Fossman is going to improve but stay in 21st. No improvements yet from any of the drivers right now. Or not a lot of improvements. At least ones that are close to the line. Currently we do have Shooter McGavin improving on early. He's currently about two tenths improved on his laps right now. But with three minutes left to go, there's about, there's about time for two more runs. This is where, honestly, qualifying is won and qualifying is lost. At the rate that this is going, Shooter McGavin's lap time would put him ahead of Matt Terry into fourth. But let's see where the shake and bake can put it. The American. Or in this case, the, the British driver. Where can he put himself? He will put himself fourth. As Nairati has a crash on those tires, he's got to go, and he's got to go now. He can't afford to make another mistake, well, especially with how little time is remaining. It doesn't look like Saniga, Polinik, Fossman, Hayes, Mullet, Leung are going to come out to do any more laps. They are done. It's pretty much, if you're on one, you're on one. If not, you're done. So these, la these final laps will count for all the marbles. As Frank Castle comes in, he can do one more flying lap right now. His improvement is going to take him up into 12th. Can he get any higher? He still has time to do so. Burt Macklin not improving very much, if at all. He can still go again. Number 7, that would be Blunden, can still go again. Kerbal finding a 10th, but that 10th's not going to matter when he's so far away from the leaders and so far ahead of a 4th. But he can go again. Number 16, I do believe that is Sanchez can go again. Number 69, Shane McGavin can go again. Matt Terry can go again. No driver showing improvement other than Stofko. He's finding that two, two, He's finding that time. It's going to be close across the line. It showed he could grab two tenths. As he just misses out. Less than a tenth for that pole position. Frank Castle will probably be the last of the drivers to cross the line, if at all. Somebody disconnected. Pretty sure it was Leung. I don't see him anywhere. As Frank Castle crosses the line. That will be it. Burt Macklin will be the last of the drivers. Or first out of the last of the drivers. And where can he finally slot himself? 
Uh, Saniga will get pole position as Stofko is caused on the yellow flag. Bradley Cooper was improving, but is going to be safe due to invalid. But Nairati will be safe due to, the, due to the invalidation. Matt Terry, oh, he was improving. He might have gotten past Shooter, but alas, he will not. So far, there's not very many drivers left alive and are that improving. Ricky Bobby invalidates and loses out and crashes. Brees, can he still hold it together? Can he still hold his line? Yes, he can. Brees is the only one left alive standing in this qualifying session. As long as he doesn't invalidate, he can still take it. He can still improve. Just keep it on the keep it on the track, good sir. Goes in a little deep, but that's what you want to do is he floors it out of the corner. Where is he gonna put himself? He puts himself 18th. All right, after a very, very, very hectic qualifying session, we can take a minute to breathe and have a nice, as all the cars are floating on my screen, seems legit. Everyone, relax, take a breath. It is time to relax. We will go now over the grid order. Saniga of the Costco Port Gang featuring, as you can see from his wing, that $1.50 hot dog. He is currently on pole position. Jacob Stofko of the MA70 Esports. He is in second. Kerbal of the Race Program. He is currently in third, third position. Shooter McGavin, highest of the pro-ams. Good showing for him in this shake and bake vehicle. He is currently fourth. The Hornet, Matt Terry, in his beautiful black and yellow in-bank motorsport, he is in fifth. Burt Macklin of the Swine Flu Syndicate, a good showing from him to start out. He is in sixth. Nairati probably wants to be probably fourth or fifth, but seventh will what he can do from now hopefully he can improve on in the race he is currently seventh of a team on the rush bradley cooper teammate absent again but he is the lone team so look you he is in eighth a good showing from him rodriguez the new pro of the american stooges he is currently ninth in his number 93 mclaren the Scuderia Boscaiello start off with Blunden in 10th position. He finished third last race. Will he get that lucky again? Let us see as track and time go on. Polinick in the healthy car. Can we get a good view of it? Somewhat yes, somewhat no. He is in 11th of the healthy car. It's full of bananas, full of emojis. It's lots of fun. Frank Castle in the Swine Flu Syndicate. What cut of meat would you like today, sir? You are 12th position. Sorry, folks. Had a bit of a cough there. Good luck to you. Andrew Batten, he again, one of our newest drivers in the Pro-Am division. He currently sits 5th amongst the Pro-Ams, but he sits 13th overall. He is in his 111 Lamborghini. Swanson of the Boscaiolo. He sits in 14th right now. His teammate up in 10th. Where can he finish by the end of this race? Number 37. All right. Hayes of the ba Baby Pig Racing. He's also part of the Port Gang. It's got the Costco. The Visa backed out. Unfortunate. But a new livery from them. It looks quite nice. Quite beautiful. And I personally enjoy it. Not the, my favorite one on the grid, but close to it. Sean Chiz with his rear raise getting ready. The party pickle. The first, the, the leading party pickle, actually. 16 in its 16th. Malat. Can we get a better view of his car? Not really. It's currently being blocked by the party pickles. But 
He is also part of the American Stooges. He, in his first race, 17th as a pro. Brees, as you saw there at the end, qualified up into 18th. Good showing for him. He's hoping to win the amateur class with the Latvian sensation moving to reserve. This is a great chance for him here. Leung currently in 19th position. All with his amateur buddies. Hopefully he can get a good start off as we are now down to the final minute. Ricky Bubby of the Shake and Bake down in 20th position. Let's see what kind of start he can get from the race. And Don Fossman rounds out the 21 car and driver grid for this race. 21st. Here we go, folks. It is going to be chaos. Maybe a little bit of bloodshed. We will see how it goes. Going to be... Let's see how crazy it'll get into turn one. Hopefully you're sat down with your favorite beverage, your favorite food. I would honestly probably get a napkin. It's going to get messy here. Oh, as all the drivers are going to have to go side by side here into the corkscrew. That's going to cause a little bit of a headache. As everyone seems to be fine for now, some people are taking not really ideal lines. As the green flag is a long ways away from where the drivers currently are. So, we have a long way to go here before we get anywhere close to action here, so. Before the race starts, let me know your predictions in the chat or down below in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, who do you think is going to win this race? Saniga got qualifying. Let's see who can win this race. As they approach the line, sit down, Grab a beverage, grab your favorite food, preferably maybe a little piece of pig. As the green flag waves and off we go. As the drivers head up into turn one. Saniga leads, Stofko second, McGavin and Kerbal fighting for third. Matt Terry Macklin goes around the outside, so does Cooper on Nairati. All seems to be fine right now, as all the drivers seem to be just fine. No one seems to have lost out anything just yet. Macklin has gone ahead of Terry. Blunden has gotten ahead of Rodriguez as of this moment. So far, Saniga, Stavko, Kerbal, McGavin. As Frank Castle starts to improve on his order, goes 11th. Rodriguez, Breeze actually moving up past him a lot. He is currently up into 17th, as uh, so far, all the drivers seeming to not be phased right now. As Shooter McGavin spins out and falls down in the order, that'll move up all the drivers that were ahead of him. As he falls all the way down into the back of this grid, it's going to be difficult for him to get back. As Saniga chases Stofko, as everyone now approaches the corkscrew, this is where chaos is going to be happened. Especially if you're going to try and there's going to be no overtaking into that section. But here we go. So far, everything seems to be battening down the hatches right now as we head off to the helicab. Is Batten going to think about going around the outside here of Polinick? Nope, he's going to break early as Polinick goes wide. That's going to allow Batten, Swanson. Breeze actually gets ahead of Sean Chez here. Good showing by him. He needs it. As his next target will be the Port King of Hayes. Breeze actually with the fastest lap right now. How long that will last will remain to be seen. But as of right now, take a look at the broadcasting times. Currently the closest battle as Fossman and Leung are going to go side by side here. In a battle of the amateur class, Fossman looks like he's going to win out that battle. As Malot falls down the order. Is he's facing... Oh, I thought he was facing the wrong... The right way. Nope, he is facing the wrong way. Currently, all the drivers separated by a second right now. 
as Rodriguez is going after Blendon now up into up into the corkscrew the corkscrews so far have claiming no lives just yet Brees currently leaning in the amateur class leading in the amateur class is Bradley right now as Rodriguez looks like he's gonna try and commit to the overtake here on Blunden. Blunden taking the inside, Rodriguez taking the outside. Who's gonna get the better line going into turn one? As they go pretty much side by side to the timing line. Into turn one we go. Rodriguez stakes to the outside as we have a spin. That's Fossman and Ricky Bobby. Possible contact made by them. We'll go back and review it later. As Brees is as we have actually who is that that is um that's batten and castle arguably in this as well blunden now gone away as castle thinks about going up the inside but does not think about it just yet as rodriguez goes wide comes back on the track almost spins that allows castle and batten to get ahead narati currently getting close to the hornet matt terry he's got to be careful not to get stung he's been stung he's been stung for arguably two weeks so he needs to avoid doing that. Sean Chez looking to chase Brees for in the top lead of the amateur class. Getting ready to head into the turn. Stofko still within a second of Zaniga right now. We'll keep an eye on that right now. Batten is heading close to Castle following him out of the corkscrew. Brees gaining on Hayes. Ch Chez currently that battle st stings as Stofko. What's happened to him? He's had a moment. That causes him to fall down uh, fall down the order, and he's currently fighting with Blunden right now. Oh no, what has happened? He must have had a slip coming out of the coming out of that corner. As he's now gonna fight with Blunden. Polinick is getting ready to fight with Swanson right now. As Blunden's gonna do his best to defend against the pro driver. Arguably one of the better drivers as Saniga is going to get away into the night. Nair Nairati in a position where he was 7th is now 5th and trying to fight for 4th. Terry is actually catching up to Macklin right now which will then in turn lead to Nairati catching him as well. So let's see how that will go as Batten looks to try and get Frank Castle. He gets, gets as close as he can without tapping him as Fossman and Ricky Bobby fight it out in the back. Sanchez looking for a moment to try and capture Breeze, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. But you never know here at DRL ACC. Look what happened to Stofko. He's currently sitting eighth. As Frank, oh, is he, is he had another moment? Because Frank, oh, a little bit of bumpiness. And here we go for Batten. Batten's going to go look around the outside here. Oh, is he does? Oh, is he going to try and do the switch back here as we go into the? As we go into the penultimate corner, he looks like he's going to go around the outside and stick it. And now he's going to park it. Rodriguez almost making contact as Stofko is going to box. The, the, the runner up, possibly even a possible race winner, has boxed so early. His tires compromised to all craziness. As he falls down the order, sitting in the pits, Batten currently leading against Castle and Rodriguez. That battle, that battle getting more and more intense as we're going to have Swanson and Polinick following soon by. Sanchez doing his best to try and get Brees Blendon looking for an overtake on Cooper here. Blendon was able to get away from Batten, but now he's going to catch Cooper here. Currently, the gap from the top five onwards not looking very impressive right now. Nairati's actually catching Matt Terry really quickly. Matt Terry must have had an office. Here we go into the screwed. Oh, no. What has happened? Oh, Nairati making a mistake. He needs to be careful where he gets back on track as he falls and tumbles down the order. Bradley Cooper now looking to try and get Matt Terry here in a position that Nairati was. Rodriguez currently falls down the order. He's going to get past. Sanchez has had an off moment, so his race trying to catch Breeze taking a massive hit and a massive turn for the worst. Narati falling down the order. He was right behind Matt Terry, but that the dirty air must have been just got his car disturbed as he 
goes completely the wrong way into the wall. Rodriguez looking to catch Nairati now. This is what Rodriguez sees as he gets as close as he can to the bumper of the team on the rush driver. London thinking about it on Cooper, but elects not to just yet, but there's still room there. There's still a chance for Blunden to get by Cooper here. Cooper going to do his best defense. This is the battle for first in the pro division, pro am division as Blunden with a nice little switch back. Maybe as they head up into this turn here, as they keep going side by side. Well, the problem is boys is time's going to run out for one of you because the screwdriver's upcoming and neither of you can go side by side into here. I lie. You can go side by side in here, but Blunden is going to win out due to having the better line. But Bradley not done with this fight just yet. Says, wait a minute, you come back here. I need that spot. Batten has gotten away from Castle. Nairati is now in this sandwich with Castle, Swanson, Polinick, Nairati, and Rodriguez. That little sandwich of, of craziness as actually Batten is looking to battle Cooper now. As they head down the final straight, it looks like Batten is going to get ahead of Cooper here based on being on the inside line. Brees has spun out on the final turn. If he stays ahead of Leung, he'll still keep the lead, and off he goes. Number 26, Ricky Bobby is currently in the, in the, at the end near the corkscrew, currently bringing out the yellow flags. Currently Batten... Blunden and Patton both getting ahead of Cooper. Frank Castle now catching Bradley Cooper as we're about to have an absolute nightmare from 6th to 12th is all right into one another. The slipstream effect going to be working very interesting as we have three pros in this battle. So Frank Castle leads this pack, followed by Swanson, Polinick, Nairati, who had a moment up in this very section a few laps ago, and Rodriguez. Three McLarens, 10, 11, and 12. Who's going to make a mistake? Who's going to make an error? Who's going to finally have the balls to say, I've had enough, and just spring an overtake? There's 85. Something happened to him there. So we have five drivers here. A nice little, nice little black pepper kombucha. That's Polinick. Is he going to think about making a move here? He... No, he's not. Nairati, is he going to try and pull one of his famous switchback here? Doesn't have the move. Doesn't have the time. However, what he is, however the time he, is, he does have, he's running out of. He needs to try and get past Polinick and Swanson to get up into Castle, Cooper, Batten, and Blunden. He, they aren't that far away in terms of time. Just he needs to find the time and the space for it. Leung is now currently catched up to Brees in the amateur division as he is less than a second up. Less than a second back, actually. I lie. Up is Brees. Back is Leung. As all of them go through the corkscrew moderately okay. Leung's dropped back. This is the battle right now. Polinick trying to catch Swanson right now. Someone is waiting for a mistake. Stavko all the way at the back has made his pit stop. Actually, where is he? Oh, he's behind the race leader. He's actually been lapped. Nairati will actually get past Polinick here. Great move into that corner and down the straight. Nairati back into 10th. Looking to try and gain the places he lost. Frank Castle actually currently getting close to Bradley Cooper, but Nairati is looking to try and grab Swanson next. Leung right on the back of Breeze. As that is of Castle going wide. As we are about to have Swanson and Castle fight it out here. Swanson gets by Castle. Castle defending from Nairati. Leung still looking to get back. 
Tires are starting to become an issue here. 15 minutes into the race. Saniga currently way up ahead, followed by Kerbal, Macklin, Terry, and Blunden. As they all get through the corkscrew just fine. This is currently just a mad dash between eight vehicles. Hayes and McGavin. McGavin looking to actually try and overtake Hayes here as we quickly swap away from that battle. Chez and Leung are right behind Brees, actually. Not that far off. Rodriguez looking to maybe get Polinick. Castle is... Rodriguez going to think about it? Not yet. He's just waiting and biding his time. He's so close. Nairati hoping for a mistake from either Swanson or Castle. So far, everyone... Oh, Polinex swings out a little wide, leaving the door a little open for Rodriguez here. As, they, as Rodriguez takes a place from Polinick, as Polinick drops into 12th position, Nairati still looking for a mistake from that pig. Is he going to find it yet? He just has to make sure he doesn't make another mistake here into the corkscrew. Everyone seems to get there out of there smooth and safely. As here we go, the amateurs now heading into the corkscrew. What's going to happen to them as everyone is in twos, twos. McGavin finally is going to get ahead of Hayes as we now go down into the corkscrew with the three, with the top three of the amateurs fighting for first place. McGavin, as I said before, is going to get ahead of Hayes. Castle closer to Swanson than Nairati is to him. Rodriguez slowly catching up to Nairati as time goes on. So far, the gap up at the top, nothing unreasonable. It's Burnt Macklin sitting as he was last week in a nice, comfortable P, P, P3 position until he made a grave mistake the last time. Currently, what we're watching is 8th to 12th and 15th to 17th. Those are the battles right now as Nairati desperately looking to try and catch castle right now trying to find any sort of mistake any crack in the armor a, a, a small problem in the foundation i don't know what that was all about my game kind of glitched out there oh the young and chez are battling it out right now as we skip away from that battle Brees just trying to ho just hoping that the competitors take each other out of this competition as Chez looks like he's gotten away from Leung at the moment as Rod as Nairati boxes to get the hell out of this mess. As Frank Castle finally gets it past Swanson as Hayes and McGavin have obviously made contact. Batten's getting closer to Blunden now. Breeze, Chez, and Leung all... Oh, there's a little bit of contact there. As that looks like a sideways... Ooh, what has happened here? Contact been made. Driver's looking the wrong way as we have Batten chasing Blunden for fifth. Matt Terry, his... Ooh, he almost had a major off there. As he falls further and further away from that podium position, Macklin pretty much on his own drive right now. Rodriguez having made gotten ahead of Frank Castle. As always, he's going to look to go way around the outside. He's got to be careful he doesn't collide with Frank Castle. Does not, but now he's on the losing end as he carries so much more speed. Almost making contact with Frank Castle. Kevin Polnick thinks about going up the inside as Nairati has a stop go 30 second penalty. Unfortunate for him. Ricky Bobby having an error into the wall. As the mis as the mistakes 
just pile up for team on the rush. Burt Macklin, he brings up the yellow flag. Nairati was contact made by him. Fortunate for him, plus he has that three second stop go penalty. Rodriguez looking on the back of Swanson. Rodriguez looking to go and try and go around the outside again. We keep on watching as Matt Terry's actually going to battle with Burke Macklin right now. Starting to get away from that battle. But Matt Terry's actually gotten ahead of Burke Macklin. Burke Macklin must have making another error. That's going to allow Matt Terry to get up into third. Batten getting closer and closer to Blunden. Rodriguez, Castle, and Polonik all getting very close to Swanson. So many close racing right now, actually. Oh, the battle for third's actually about to get nice and nice and spicy right now. As currently, Rodriguez has fallen all the way back. He must have had a mistake. As Swanson Castle and Polonik benefit, Blunden has gotten actually ahead of Macklin right now. And next stop, Batten's actually about to pass Macklin as well. Macklin's surely going to be boxing this lap due to him falling so much. Yep, surely enough, he boxes and heads off. Currently Matt Terry third, Blunden fourth, Batten fifth, Saniga two seconds up currently on Kerbal. Kerbal's still there. Just needs a little bit of time. Polonik goes into the pits, Castle still following Swanson. Obviously his tires still feeling good. As Castle thinks about maybe thinking about an overtake here, not just yet, he says, I'm going to wait my turn. London trying to catch Matt Terry for another podium position. Castle just trying to gain places right now, trying to get that seventh spot. Brees all the way up currently into 12th. London looking like he's going to catch Terry quicker and quicker. Neither of them deciding to box just yet. So still trying to so oh Rodriguez has entered himself slowly back into this fight Stofko actually looking to chase Fonsman as they make contact and that's going to send Stofko a little wide Who's that into the box? Sean Chiz and Leung both decide to box at this moment. London still trying to get there. As that is Stofko into the pits. Has damage. It's 
London follows Matt Terry. Literally eye for eye as Kerbal now also goes into the box. So Niga continuing to race on. As we are now halfway through. What close battles do we have? Frank Castle and Rodriguez. Rodriguez being the closest out of the two. Rodriguez elects to box. So now it's just Castle and Swanson. Kerbal done his pit stop. He is free and allowed to race. His teammate on the rush decides to box as well. As Brees will make it ahead of Stofko and Fossman, but he sits back of Sean Chez by quite a margin. Currently, Shooter McGavin and Batten have yet to box. Hayes and Brees in the box, same with Malott. Fossman and Stofko in the box right now, currently getting repairs done. As Castle elects to finally box now. So the closest battle currently is Blunden on Terry. This is effectively right now for P2, but Kerbal is still having yet to box. Effectively, this is for the final podium position. Let's see how powerful the undercut is, is here. As Malat will box. Oh, Blunden just goes off. We'll see if he gets a any penalty or reprimand from the Stewarts for that as Nairati slowly beginning to gain places now. That's Frank Castle coming out the box. Rodriguez, Shooter McGavin gets a 30 second stop go penalty. As 1.2, as Hayes now currently on the back of Brees. Thinking about the inside, not just yet. Brees willing to give him the opportunity to race. London and Swanson both in the box. We're going to turn one. Defending it well is Brees. This is a fight for position, so every reason to fight it. Spurt Macklin gets ahead of both Scuderias. As out goes Blunden now. Brees still holding off Hayes. Rodriguez slowly beginning to catch up to Castle now. The order right now is all kinds of flubbery. As Terry and Cooper both begin to box, Kerbal and Macklin slowly catching up the grid order.
He's still looking for Brees right now. So Niga and Batten still have yet to box. As Hayes finally is going to take a look up the inside as both drivers have a little bit of a spinner Rooney. Leung actually going to try and benefit from this, and he does so just fine. Sean Chez also benefiting from this. Now, Hirati actually also is going to be benefit a little bit from this as well. As Hayes still trying to get his bearings right. This is, this is allowed as Matt Terry has been disqualified. Oh, no. Disaster. As his P2, potentially P3, drops out of his reach, leaving another spot. As Cooper gets a drive through. The st <laughs> the in-game stewards having no business at all as oh my goodness that is a bad place to oh my the corkscrew claiming of victims as there was just a roadblock in the middle of it that's gonna severely hample severely hample eh, hamper Kerbal so so far in this race we've had a stop go for for an Irati, we've had a stop go for McGavin, a drive through for Cooper, and a disqualification for Terry. Incredible. As Saniga with the with the distance because of Kerbal being unintentionally and completely by accident blocked in the corkscrew should easily keep his position as Polinick is right on the back of Swanson fighting currently for ninth as it stands it's a bad day to be a pro or pro-am driver right now Shane McGavin going for his stop go 30 second time penalty. How many positions will he lose in that effort? As Hayes gets past Leun. Polinick still looking for Swanson. Rodriguez now actually looking at Castle as well. Sanchez moving up into 11th. Breeze now moving up into 12th. Sadly enough, that 30 second stop go penalty isn't going to be long enough for Nairati to catch up to him. As Rodriguez and Castle. Still, Batten still having not completed a full pit stop. Currently the closest battles being Rodriguez Castle, Polinick Swanson. Castle Rodriguez fighting for six, Polinick Swanson fighting for eighth. Everything else in the middle and everything else in between. So far, no changes in the order just yet. Leon still looking at Hayes. Remember, Brees is ahead of Hayes right now. Sean Chez is actually currently ahead of both of them. So currently right now, as it, Sean, as it stands, Sean Chez would win the amateur, would win the amateur class part of this race. Currently in, for the Pro-Ams, it would, at this current stance, be Batten. But according to this, Batten still needs to box. So, as it stands right now, Blunden is currently winning in that division. 
And then Saniga is cruising to victory here in a sense. Hayes versus Brees round two. We saw what happened here last time as they also all <laughs> approached the corkscrew again. Will history repeat itself? Not again, not this time, says Brees. We're not going to make a moving roadblock. I'm just going to block you out. Yellow flag for Polinic as he spins and hits the barrier. That's going to allow Cooper to get ahead. So far, that will be the only person that gets ahead of him right now, but he has got major damage to his front. Let's see. Hopefully, he will not, not need to box, but with damage like that, he might just have to. Leong seeing second place in the amateur class in front of him. And Hayes sitting in 13th. Rodriguez now right on the back of Castle. Getting very close here. Heading now down into turn one. Yep, Polinic had to box for damage. So that's going to allow Chess, Breeze, Hayes, Leung, McGavin, maybe even Nairati to benefit from that. Oh, Hayes thought about going for it on Breeze again, but Breeze slamming the door shut. Saying, no, sir, I'm sorry, you cannot have this. Hayes looking to try and get a better exit, get into the slipstream. This is what he sees. Reese blocking up the middle of the track, but he goes a little deep as they go side by side. As Breeze goes wide, keep it hold of it, son, and you just do. You'll lose out to Hayes, but you are still sitting second as he goes wide again. His tires might be a little bit compromised as Burt Macklin gets ahead of him for blue flags. Rodriguez still on castles. He gets ever so closer. Narati moving up into 15th now. Polinic. Still sitting in the pits, getting repairs done to his car after a major collision with the wall. With less than 10 minutes to go in this race, there's this one lone battle on track. As we head up into the corkscrew now. All right. We will keep an eye on this battle, but for now we are going to take it in to the replay booth and see A little bit of contact made there. Okay, so we can't see that contact. Can we see this one? Oh, that's just unfortunate. And Nairati was facing the wrong way. Nairati, is it? London who he's chasing are getting a tow along yep that would be Blendon. they came together last week 
Bossman and Ricky Bobby are still fighting it out. Brees and Leung are fighting it out, actually. Oh, no. What's happened to Brees? As he falls and starts to tumble down the order. Shooter McGavin's actually going to get ahead. Oh, no. Bert Ma oh, Frank Castle's actually spun out. Was there contact made? Doesn't look like it. It just looks like a spin out. This castle falls all the way down into ninth behind Bradley Cooper. Rodriguez so far going to sit at least as of right now sixth in his new finish. Bossman, Ricky Bobby still fighting it out. Leung and Breeze still fighting for that second in their second in their class race. This is a party pickle in all of this. Sean Chez being arguably blocked right now. Oh my goodness, major, major incident there. We'll go and take a look at the replay. Oh, Ricky Bobby just, oh my goodness, lucky that didn't catch Polinick driving by. Was Brees still trying to get a grip, handle, trying to get a grip on Leun, trying desperately to get him. Erati has actually fallen back of London right now. Right now, Brees and them is the closest battle. What happened with Brees and Hayes? That I that I want to see on replay. Okay, it wasn't here. Oh, it was Brees and Leun. That's what I want to... That's what I want to see. I want to see that fucking moving roadblock that that was. And Kerbal just arrives on the scene like, Oh, hey guys, what up? <laughs> Unfortunate for him, Cooper's actually going after Swanson now. With less than five minutes to go, Saniga has pretty much all but claimed this race. Stavko. Having finished last. Well, technically not last, because Terry got disqualified, but... Bad day for the pros. Ooh, Brees catching up on Oh Nairati having a little, little bit of a spin, but recovers it. Still in 15th. He was catching his teammate there real quick for a second, but alas. He will most likely stay 15th. Oh, Cooper, as he goes to the side by side, if that were the final lap, that would have been really interesting to see. As Cooper goes nice and easy up the inside. However, Swanson's not too keen on letting that go. Oh, almost came back out on track and collected. Nice side by side. Cooper and Swanson fighting it out for third place on in their class. I had a mental breakdown trying to say that as we are going to head up to the corkscrew. Swanson elects to fall back. Batten pits now. He pits pretty much as late as he could have gone. So that's going to allow Blunden 
up into four, uh, up into fourth. How far is he gonna fall? Is my question. He's probably gonna fall down at least to tenth. As that allow will now allow Bradley and Swanson to now finish two, three, respectively. In what order, I do not know. We'll find out. As Swanson so far seemingly is backed off. Hayes is right on the back of Chez. Breeze has actually gotten ahead of Leun. So unless... Ooh, coming close to some contact. Swanson's now right on the back of Bradley here. So he's going to maybe go up the inside as they make a little bit of contact. Swanson spins out. Bradley spins out on the back end. Castle's about to come into this. As Castle benefits and heads into sixth. And they're still fighting it out. Months second and third amongst themselves. Batten has just disappeared. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, folks, the disappearing act continues here at DRLACC. It was blunted in the beginning, and now it's gone on to Batten. I have no clue where he went. Hayes and Chez still fighting it out. This has... Chez can ill afford to have a wreck right here. Number 37, Swanson falls, but they got to move quick because the leader now on the final lap. As McGavin gets ever closer to this battle, Nairati has a little bit of an off. He still has time before Mellet comes, but this is where things will get interesting. It is now crunch time. The top 10, are you, the top eight arguably has been decided. It's now going to come down to this as McGavin's going to look for it on Hayes. He's going to try and find it. He's got to. The switchback might be complete as they're going to go side by side into the final turn. Hayes goes a wee bit deep to try and cover it off. Nairati, despite the stop-go, despite the mistake, despite the contact, is going to finish 14th. Somewhat decent damage control. Brees just trying to hold off for second in his class. Trying to keep that strong showing. It's not the race win. It's not the class win. But it's still going to be good enough. It's still going to be better than what has happened the last two weeks. Seniga. With Stavko gone, never a doubt, as he wins at Laguna. Kerbal will finish eventually. Nairati will be first to cross the line as Milot has a little bit of an off. Currently, right now, McGavin. McGavin and Hayes are fighting it out right now. Oh, McGavin! Don't die there, son! Hey, still trying to catch Chez, Bradley, Ka Kerbal finishing in second, Castle six, Cooper somehow se seven, whatever. Swanson now eighth. As Hayes looks like he's still going to keep his position. Leon chasing Brees right now on the edge as we head into the second last corner. The battle for second here going strong. As Leung shoves it up the inside, but he goes deep. Breeze with a switch back at the end! Oh, what a beautiful move! And that will earn Breeze 12th position. Oh, what a switch back at the end there, as everyone does donuts to signify what a race this has been. Ricky Bobby still crosses the line and that ends that so Saniga you can't see has won the race Kerbal gets second Macklin gets third Blunden gets fourth Rodriguez gets fifth Castle gets sixth Cooper is seventh 
Swanson is eighth. Chez is ninth and wins in the amateur division. Blunden takes it in the pro am. Hayes at tenth. McGavin eleventh. Brees twelfth. Leon thirteenth. Nairati fourteenth. Malat fifteenth. Polinick sixteenth. Ricky Bobby seventeenth. And Batten eighteenth. Fossman in nineteenth. I don't know where he went. He disappeared. Stavko. Also disappeared in 20th and disqualified was Matt Terry, most likely for speeding in the pit lane. There will not be any post-race interviews again this weekend. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you and goodbye.